Good morning, church. Good morning. Let's pray together, shall we? Father, we're grateful for the fact that you have allowed us and availed us of the opportunity to gather the church in the church house. We thank you, Father, for the rain because it, it enables us to realize and understand you are the God of nature and nature's God. You are the sovereign God that we serve and nothing transpires in our lives by which you are not totally aware. And so we thank you, Father, for the privilege to gather, to praise, to fellowship, to worship as family. And we pray, God, the Holy Spirit will open our hearts and our minds to the truth. Enable us to continue to grow in grace and in the full knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that he might be honored and glorified. All of us together say, Amen. Amen. Are you tickling the ivory this morning? Well, I will attempt. How about 285? Oh, oh, yeah, okay. Do you have a hymnal? Yes. Jake, you were missed Friday. Thank you for being here this morning. Yeah. You missed the popcorn. <laughs> <laughs> Thank uh -huh. 
Thank you. You did well this morning. Thank you. <laughs> you hit all 900 keys. Faster. Uh, faster. Faster. Word of God is alive and powerful and it's sharper than any two edged sword. Piercing even to the dividing of son of soul and spirit and joints and marrow. And is a discerner, a judge of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scriptures God breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. The man of God might be fully equipped unto all good works. Let's open God's word this morning to Daniel. Daniel chapter what was in here when I left. There it is. <clears throat> Daniel chapter two. We are continuing our study of Daniel. Uh, We are in the second chapter of Daniel. <clears throat> and I believe we stopped at uh, verse 19. Let's bow together, show. Father, we thank you for granting us the privilege, as we said earlier, of being here this morning. We ask as we look into your inerrant word of truth that you would open our hearts and our minds to the truth. We ask God the Holy Spirit to teach us and grant us enlightenment that we might continue to grow in grace and in the full knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ that he might be honored and glorified. All of us together say, Amen. Amen. Now, we find that Nebuchadnezzar, who is the Babylonian king, has captured and brought into the kingdom uh, uh, Hebrews. Four of them he has uh, done what needs to be necessary to groom, as it were, for them to become an integral part of his kingdom. There are, they are, uh, Ananiah, Michelle, uh, and Azariah, and Daniel. Um, <clears throat> Nebuchadnezzar had a dream. I think it was a recurring dream, but anyway, the dream troubled him. And he went to his uh, wise men, his cogeners, and sorcerers, uh, all of his, let's say, the brain trusts, as it were. And uh, they could not tell him. His demands were, you tell me the dream and then tell me what it means. Uh, you have to remember the fact that at this particular time, the Babylonian Empire was the most powerful empire, authority, as it were, on the planet. And Nebuchadnezzar was, was uh, foremost in authority, humanistically. And... He, he could do anything and everything that he so desired. Well, this dream troubled him. And all he wanted to know was in that he demanded that you tell me the dream and then tell me what it means. <laughs> well, the brain trust, or the, <clears throat> the wise men, wanted to know they could tell him the interpretation of the dream if he told them the dream. And he refused to do that. As a matter of fact, he, he said to them, point blank, if you don't tell me the dream and what it means, <clears throat> I will literally, uh, your history. And uh, uh, he will, he's already advised them of the fact that they will be eliminated totally. Uh, and their families will be eliminated, and the households will come uh, will become uh, uh, waste heaps. <clears throat> well, uh, they could could.
could no longer deny the fact that they could neither tell him the dream nor interpret it. So his response was, get rid of all the wise men. Take them out. Well, <coughs> he got down to the point that Daniel and Azariah, Michelle, and uh, Hananiah uh, had been advised of the fact that, that uh, they were about to be eliminated. Well, Daniel went into the king and asked for a little more time. And time was granted to him. So, I want you to keep this in mind, though. Where are we going with this? What is transpiring? There is about to become a shift, as it were, from the Israelites to the Gentiles. And there was a reason for that. We are still under what is called the times of the Gentiles. And this is when it was about to occur because of this dream. Nebuchadnezzar and his Gentile empire may never have been aware of the transition, as it were, because you have four Hebrews that are about to bring this Gentile kingdom into a future re revelation of things that will come to pass. Uh, whether or not he understood that, I don't think so. Because I, I don't think he actually understood what all of this meant and what was actually coming. At this particular time, the primary <clears throat> location of the power is Babylon. Well, it's about to shift to Babylon from uh, <clears throat> <coughs> Jerusalem. It's going to shift. So that's why I said we're about to walk into the times of the Gentiles in which we still find ourselves. Now, with all of that in mind, and you might keep that in mind, <clears throat> let's look at, uh, let's start with verse 18 and see how far we can go. Verse 18. In order that they might uh, request <clears throat> compassion from the God of heaven concerning this mystery, so that Daniel and his friends might not be destroyed with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. Verse 19. Then the mystery was revealed to Daniel in a night vision. Now, this is the beginning of what we'll call the transition from the Jews to the Gentiles. In this vision, what Daniel is going to see is what's going to be revealed to Nebuchadnezzar. Verse, <clears throat> verse 20. Daniel said, Let the name of God be blessed forever and ever. For wisdom and power belong to him. It is he who changes the times and the epochs. He removes kings and establishes kings. He gives wisdom to wise men. He acknowledges to men of understanding. It is he who reveals the profound and the hidden things. He knows, he knows what is in the darkness and the light dwells in him. Verse 23. To you, O God, of my Father, I give thanks and praise for you have given me wisdom and power. Even now, you have made known to me what we requested of you, for you have made known to us the king's matter. So he has revealed to Daniel and the three of them 
what is coming. Nebuchadnezzar has no idea what's about to transpire. The only thing that he knows for sure is that he has a dream. He had a dream and it troubled him. <clears throat> so, we go from verse 24 and beyond, as it were. The end of the chapter is verse 49. So, let's see how far where we can go from 24. <clears throat> Therefore, Daniel went in <clears throat> to Arioch. Arioch was the, the uh, captain of the God, as it were. He was the keeper of these individuals. He was the one to who the four of them and the other captives were responsible. <clears throat> Thank you. Good coffee. <clears throat> whom the king had appointed uh, to destroy the wise men of Babylon. He went and spoke to him as follows. Do not destroy the wise men of Babylon. Take me into the king's presence, and I will declare the interpretation to the king. Verse 25. Then Arioch hurriedly brought Daniel into the king's presence and spoke to him as follows. I have found a man among the exiles from Judah. Isn't that nice? Ariat found him. <laughs> <clears throat> Thank you, Ariat. Anyway, <clears throat> who can make the interpretation known to the king? Then the king said to Daniel, whose name was Belteshazzar, now that was his Babylonian, yeah, Babylonian name. But Daniel very seldom went by this Babylonian name. He remained steadfast to, to his name, Daniel. Are you able to make known to me the dream which I have uh, seen and its interpretation. Verse 27, Daniel answered before the king and said, As for the mystery about which the king has in, uh, inquired, neither wise men, congeners, magicians, nor divinators are able to declare it to the king. However, there is a God in heaven who reveals mysteries and he has made known to the king what will take place in the latter days. This was your dream and the visions in your mind while on your bed. So Nebuchadnezzar was about to be advised of future things. <clears throat> As a Gentile, I'm sure he had no idea what, what he was looking at. He may very well have not been aware of what Daniel referred to as the latter days. That's speculation. We don't know what he was thinking. <laughs> don't really like to speculate, but... <laughs> so, um, but I really want you to understand this situation. And uh, that's what it is right now. So we look at verse 29. As for you, O king, while you were uh, in <clears throat> your bed, your thoughts turn to what would take place when? In the future. In the future. Okay? Now, And he who reveals mysteries has made known to you what will take place. When? In the future. Nebuchadnezzar was not, I am sure, anywhere near aware of what was going to happen in the future. 
I don't think it was in his mind at all, these things that he was about to hear. <clears throat> now, verse 30. But as for me, this mystery has not been revealed to me for any wisdom uh, re <clears throat> residing in me more than any other living man, but for the purpose of making the interpretation known to the king, and that you may understand the thoughts of your mind. You, O king, were looking, and behold, there was a single great statue. That statue, which was large and of ex extraordinary splendor, was standing in front of you, and its appearance was awesome. The head of the statue was made of fine gold, its breast, its arms of silver, its belly and thighs of bronze, its feet of iron, its, <clears throat> its feet partly of iron and partly of clay, its legs of iron. You continued looking until a stone, which was cut out without hands, and it struck the statue on its feet of iron and clay and crushed them. Then the iron, the clay, the bronze, the silver, and the gold were crushed all at the same time and became like chaff from the summer thrashing floor. And the wind carried them away so that not a trace of them was found. But the stone that struck the statue became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. What's he talking about? He's talking about the second advent of Christ. And Nebuchadnezzar had no idea what he was looking at. This was the Gentile king looking at where we are today in the times of the Gentiles. So what has transpired? We're still waiting and looking for the second advent. We know the king is coming. We don't know when. Does it matter when, if we are ready when he comes? No. What about Nebuchadnezzar and the Babylonian Empire? The Babylonian Empire is no longer in existence. And neither, neither are the Medo-Persians. However, bear this in mind. What were known as the Medo-Persians then are now the Persians of Iran. 1935, they changed the name from Persia to Iran, but they still speak the original language of Persia. So, <clears throat> are we still looking at the future? Yes, we are. Because we're still in the times of the Gentiles. Has the revived Roman Empire, which, we do, which is spoken of, the legs, the legs of iron and the feet and toes of iron and clay? Not yet. But they're there and the revived Roman Empire has not been revived yet. Why do we say that? Because the Antichrist will come out of that. We also have to look at the other side of this. When will the Antichrist be revealed? once the church is raptured. So what are we waiting for? The Antichrist? No. No. We're waiting for the... <clears throat> we're waiting for the rapture of the church. That's what we, as the body of Christ, are waiting for. 
Uh, so, this whole thing to Nebuchadnezzar was a mystery. And in many respects, the body of Christ, this is still a mystery. But to us, when we look at the inerrant word of God, and we understand where Nebuchadnezzar was, where Daniel and the other three were at that time, we can put all the pieces of this mystery together. And it's not because of who and what we are. It is because of the sovereign God that we serve. <clears throat> I don't think the multitude of the body of Christ really understand that as the body of Christ, how blessed we really are. We have so much to be grateful for. What, we <clears throat> what has been bestowed on us as the body of Christ, we neither earn nor